What's good, everybody? Winter Cut Day 72. Boys, today is the protein shake talk. You guys already know what's happening. Tomorrow is chest day. We got to get fueled up and repaired tonight so that way we can perform tomorrow. So I got the shaker out. I'm going to put this together. All right. Anyway, boys, tomorrow we're going to have a rambunctious chest day. Uh, I'm going to do probably about three sets of incline with the new grip that I kind of am trying, which, believe it or not, is pretty much just the original grip that I used to use and my strongest grip. So uh, I used to always kind of do close grip a little bit. And that's kind of how I always would press, and that's how I felt strongest for whatever reason. I think that may be because I'm tricep dominant heavily, and my chest tends to not do much of the work in my presses. But because of that, I switched to wide grip, like ultra wide I'm talking. I would grab the Smith machine, and I would literally just have my index finger and thumb on the bar, and my the rest of my hands would be outside. So I'd be kind of flaring my elbows a little bit and just focusing on the bottom stretch ultra wide grip right on that smith machine just getting a super deep stretch and that worked pretty good uh in terms of chest development i definitely did not see an issue with it but after that i was like hmm i'm not getting stronger for a while like i was not getting stronger at all and obviously in your training you do want to see adaptations so you know i was like you know what? i just kind of want to try a grip that might feel a little better right and plus, we know when you do ultra wide grip for a long time, like I did, I was probably doing it for like three months. Uh, well, that's not a long time, but that's long ish. Um, you get a little bit tired of it. You know what I'm saying? So actually, I think I'm going to have one scoop of this and then a protein bar. So I was thinking about it, boys. And this is just a thought. Not necessarily sure if I'm going to do it. But um, the Pittsburgh Pro is happening. And they do have a teen division competition, okay? Now, if I'm honest with myself, I'll say this, that I don't know, I don't know how bodybuilding really works at all. Other than, you know, I, I watch it. Um, I enjoy it. I train for it, honestly, um, just to gain as much size as I can and be aesthetic and proportional, you know, cut, bulk, all those things. But when it comes to actually going and doing the competition it's kind of like well you know i know obviously you're supposed to be extremely shredded and you know maybe even you know carved up while in that shredded state to look extra full and lean and dry maybe take out sodium or something you know random things okay but um you know i've even seen guys take laxatives like <laughs> day of the show to just crap out all you know, that they got in there just so they can get like a deeper vacuum and a smaller looking waist, which is pretty crazy to me. But anyway, um, my whole point is, I don't know if I actually want to do it, but I did calculate it and it's drawn a blank here. Oh yeah. 68 days away. Um, so I would have about almost 10 weeks to prep. And I know for a fact in 10 weeks, I could drop crazy amounts of fat. Uh, how I would approach it is probably just do an extremely aggressive cut for the first few weeks. So like for the first three weeks, I'd lose like something crazy, like two and a half pounds per week or three, get in, you know, 20, 30,000 steps a day, be in a super steep deficit, keep my training intense to the best of my ability, maybe even lower the volume just to maintain. Um, but then after that, I would probably eat more leading up to the show. So where I would be leading or losing about two pounds per week uh, during, you know, the last six weeks. And then what we'd see from there, you know? I mean, it would just depend on, obviously these are kind of rough numbers I'm throwing around, but you get what I'm saying. I would be losing less weight leading up to the show. So that way towards the steepest end of the cut where I would be losing, you know, more muscle probably, um, I'd be able to better preserve it and have a better look on stage and maybe not be as depleted. Um, which would probably be better, you know? But anyway, three, two, one. I'm gonna finish that in a second, but uh, I wanna try to go heavy on, you know, 
chest flies. I heard an optimal creator, like a science-based creator, say that um, decline bench was probably better for chest growth overall long term. And it would be a better way to just put on, if you have just a really small chest, especially, like just if you need any mass, like if you just need mass, you don't care what it is, do decline and put it first, go heavy, progressively overload. So who knows, that might be something I'll do in the future, but honestly, I don't see that anytime soon happening. I'd rather just stick with incline. I've, I've been sticking with incline first for such a long time. It's been pretty much ingrained in me at this point to just do two plates on the incline um, Smith machine for a while. So anyway, you know, one area of strength that I feel is missing from my body is the strength to do a really solid pec fly. I want to be able to do like the 90s with really just good serious form. That's kind of my overall like long-term goal, right? Just really good form, kind of just tempo. I feel like if I could do reps like that, man, my chest would be out of this world. But you know, also though, I do feel like the guys who have the biggest chests usually are the strongest pressers. So we'll see. I don't think there's a one size fits all thing, but I just get the feeling that maybe if I got really strong at flies, it would benefit my chest overall way more than anything else. Not way more than anything else, but more than just getting strong at pressing wood. Should have chosen my words more carefully. But, you guys get it. Creatine's getting stirred. We're getting serious here. You know, some people dry scoop creatine. I don't know how you could do that. It doesn't make sense to me. Dry scooping in general is a little sus to me. I don't know. I just never understood it. Because usually things that you dry scoop stay clumpy. And they don't have a solid opportunity to mix together. Um, with water and properly mix. I mean, you guys get what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, if the, if the stuff's not mixing properly and it's staying clumped while you digest it, you're not going to get all the benefits. So I don't recommend dry scooping personally. Plus there's a risk of like choking. Kind of seems pointless. I'd rather just stir it and maybe enjoy it a little more and not have a safety risk and potentially less benefit. Silly to me. Anyway, let's finish this protein shake. Hope you guys have a good one. I will see you guys tomorrow.